Welcome to the Fraternity and Sorority Life Potential New Member Orientation Module. I'm Kara Jenkins, the Senior Director for the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our community. Please pay close attention as you will be asked to answer a few comprehensive questions after viewing this video. Okay, let's get started. Through this video, you will learn about the Fraternity and Sorority Life Office and our chapter standards and expectations. We will also discuss topics related to health and wellness and the community of care we hope to foster. Finally, we will discuss bystander intervention and the ideal chapter culture. The Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life is located in room 238 of Sykes Student Union. Our phone number is 610-436-2117. An email is fsl at wcupa.edu. You can follow us on Instagram at WCUFSL and on Facebook at Fraternity and Sorority Life WCU. Our office has three full-time staff members and two graduate assistants dedicated in advising chapters on an individual basis in chapter operations. Our staff also advises our four governing councils and a programming board, which we'll talk about next. The Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life oversees and advises four governing councils, the Interfraternity Council, or IFC, the Multicultural Greek Council, or MGC, National Panhellenic Greek Council, or NPHC, and Panhellenic Council, or PHC. Chapters operate on a shared governance model. These governing councils oversee individual chapters. These chapters and their governing council designation are listed on our website. Overall, our community is comprised of almost 2,000 members, which is 15% of the student population. The Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life is committed to holding groups accountable when they are not living out their values or providing a safe community for student members. In partnership with the Office of Student Conduct, the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life may change a chapter's status in response to behaviors that do not align with the Student Code of Conduct, such as violations to the anti-hazing policy. Groups can lose recognition for many reasons, including, but not limited to, hazing, furnishing alcohol to minors, or sexual misconduct. For a listing of our unrecognized groups, please visit our website. We also encourage you to visit the Group Conduct section of the Office of Student Conduct's website for a full listing of group conduct investigations and outcomes. Remember, if you ever feel unsafe or hear something that doesn't seem right, please submit an Office of Student Conduct report, which is anonymous and can be found on the front page of both of our websites. The Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life is committed to providing a co-curricular, values-based experience where students are empowered to lead, cultivate, connect, and engage both at Westchester University and beyond. In other words, the mission of the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life is to assist our organizations to align with the values in which they were founded and to help define what a meaningful fraternity and sorority experience is. Because when done right, Fraternities and sororities can be a powerful mechanism for students to explore their identities, create meaningful relationships, and serve the community, and support each other's personal and professional pursuits. We have high expectations for the fraternity and sorority community. In order to be a recognized fraternity or sorority, chapters must follow specific rules, such as maintaining a 2.5 chapter and new member GPA average. Chapters and individuals must sign the anti-hazing agreement and practice a zero tolerance policy for hazing. And chapters must provide a values-driven experience for their members. We want fraternity and sorority members to understand that joining a fraternity or sorority is a lifelong commitment rooted in tradition, values, and ritual. If a chapter is not providing a positive values-based membership experience, they are not welcome here at Westchester University. Next, we will cover some things we think you should know 
about what type of experience our chapters should be providing. If you choose to join a fraternity or sorority, we truly want you to love this experience. We will use the heart eye emoji to, des to designate this over the moon ideal fraternity and sorority experience. Let's take a moment. What would this look like for you? Now keep that feeling in mind as we discuss some scenarios. First, some introductions. Meet our friends. Greek Gray, Sorority Sarah, Fraternity Frank. It's Thursday night, and Sarah and Gray invite their new friend Frank to come to a party at their favorite fraternity on campus. Frank doesn't normally drink, but decided to dive into the experience and accepts a cup of the fraternity's famous juice. After a few hours, Sarah and Gray can't find Frank, and someone mentioned that there's a drunk person leaning against the side of the house. Sarah and Gray go outside to check and find Frank on the ground, covered in vomit. People around them are laughing about Frank being a lightweight and taking Snapchats of him. Sarah hears someone mention sending a video of him falling over to Barstool. Sarah and Gray try but are unable to get Frank up. Gray tells Sarah they think they should call for help. Sarah hesitates. Her boyfriend's in the fraternity and she doesn't want them to get in trouble for no reason. In this scenario, the worst decision you can make is to leave Frank there. He should have paced himself better and you don't want to get the fraternity in trouble. The next decision may be considered the status quo. It's still very problematic. Taking Frank back to your off-campus apartment because you can't go back to the residence hall without getting cited and he probably just needs to sleep it off. The decision that reflects a community of care, the path not everyone takes, but the path the fraternity and sorority community needs, is understanding that Frank needs help. You call 911 and let the fraternity know help is on its way. WCU has a wide variety of resources related to this scenario. You can visit the Wellness Promotion Office to talk with a staff member about healthy decision making. You can also chat with one of the drug and alcohol counselors at the Counseling Center on campus, which also has walk-in office hours. As always, you can submit a student of concern report through the Office of Student Conduct if you're concerned about a friend. What does the culture of a chapter look like that has a positive and healthy new member experience? The worst case scenario for a new member experience would be including the chapter making an effort to break down new members, to build them back up. New members have little or no information on what to expect out of the new member process. New members don't feel they have the ability to say no without repercussion. The problematic status quo may look like the chapter having bonding events that might make some members feel uncomfortable. There are are parts of the new member process that the university and our national office are unaware of. And the new member experience that aligns with a community of care would look like the chapter having a firm understanding of the organization's mission and values, and thus they create a new member program that reflects those beliefs. The chapter develops members and leaders through structured team building and bonding activities, and all members feel they have a voice in decisions and have the autonomy to make change. As a potential new member of our community, we need you to know that hazing is never okay. We need you to say no, and if you can't because you fear of repercussion, then the action is likely considered hazing. The Westchester University hazing policy is defined as any action using relational power which creates a coercive environment leading to an act or variety of acts perpetuated with or without consent that reasonably may result in personal distress, ridicule, embarrassment, humiliation, criminal activity, or endangers the mental health, physical health, or safety of a person or property for the purpose 
of initiation or ongoing membership in an organization. WCU recognizes that hazing occurs on a continuum from subtle to violent and therefore includes these actions in an attempt to educate prior to escalation. These actions are graded from subtle hazing to aggravated hazing, depending on the severity of the safety concern. Definitions of hazing all vary, but have a common factor. Having a power differential between those in a group and those wanting to join. Overall, these activities can often be summed up as things you would not be proud to share with family members. Also, it's important to note that the willingness to participate does not absolve responsibility for either party. New members will sign an anti-hazing policy when they join, and each time a chapter brings in new members, current members agree to follow the policy again. It's important to note that individual students can be found responsible for hazing along with an organization. If you are ever questioning if you're going through hazing, ask yourself these questions. Would I feel comfortable participating in this activity if my parents were watching? Am I being asked to keep these activities a secret? Am I doing anything illegal? Does participation in this activity violate my values or those of this organization? Is this causing emotional or physical distress or stress to myself or others? Am I gonna be able to get a job if I have to put a criminal arrest on my application? Your answers to these questions should make it very clear if what you are participating in would be considered hazing. Again, there are several resources on campus where you can report incidences of hazing. You can report hazing on the anonymous student conduct reporting form or in Sykes 238 with staff from the Office of Student Leadership and Involvement Office or the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Next, we'll be talking about how the culture of a chapter looks that has a commitment to inclusion. A chapter that actively recruits members of the same background, students or people of marginalized identities regularly report feeling unsafe around the chapter. The chapter has songs, chants, or practices that uses derogatory and demeaning language. The problematic status quo chapter may claim to be diverse, but members of the chapter will use demeaning or derogatory language regularly. Members from marginalized identities will joke about being the token member. A chapter that lives out the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion and creates a culture of acceptance and actively supports its members in their identity. The chapter provides resources for members and the community to explore and discuss issues of inequality and advocates for a campus, chapter, and fraternity and sorority community that accepts and embraces all people. For resources related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, you can, you can visit the Lawrence A. Dowdy Multicultural Center in Sykes, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at 1315 University Avenue, the Office of Trans and Queer Advocacy in Sykes, or as always, you can submit an anonymous student conduct report or, an, or report an incidence of bias. Next up, mental health. What does the culture of a chapter look like that supports students in their mental health? The worst case scenario would be a chapter that ignores and inflames issues of mental health. This may include targeting members through new member education, perpetuating unhealthy and unrealistic body images, and harassing those who may exhibit signs of mental health issues. The problematic status quo chapter would likely be aware of members experiencing issues with mental health, but provide no resources or support. The chapter does not provide exceptions for members who need accommodations. The chapter might belittle members who are struggling with dismissive, dismissive language. 
The ideal chapter culture that indicates a true culture of care would be an organization that regularly provides opportunities to members to discuss personal issues and provides resources for those who might be struggling. The chapter works with resources on campus and from their national organization and encourages members to use them without fear or shame. Westchester has many resources available to students struggling with mental health. Students can visit the Student Health Services in Commonwealth Hall or the Counseling Center in the Lawrence Center. There are also non-WCU resources available to students in the form of the Crisis Text Line, the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. As always, if you're concerned about a friend, you can submit a student of concern report to elicit additional support. Finally, it's important to remember that the only confidential resources are Student Health Services and the Counseling Center. Time for another scenario. Ryan is a good friend of yours and tells you that they matched with someone named Sam on Tinder. Ryan tells you they invited Sam to a party that you'll be attending. While at the party, you notice Sam encouraging Ryan to drink, and Sam appears to be holding Ryan upright. Sam begins to lead Ryan towards the bedroom. First, the worst possible decision would be to let Ryan go with Sam, thinking Ryan is an adult and he can make his own decision. The problematic status quo reaction would result in asking Ryan if they're okay, and Ryan says yes, and you let them go and plan to check on them the next morning. Finally, a chapter with a strong culture of care would promote members to let the host of the party know they're concerned about Ryan and Sam and they find a way to get Ryan home safely. Oftentimes, there are bystanders present in scenarios like the one we just discussed with Ryan and Sam. These people have the power to stop incidences of harm before they cause devastating impacts. At Westchester, we have the Green Dot Program that discusses the three Ds of bystander intervention. The first method, directly confronting the situation. This is taking the situation head on and stopping any further action from taking place. For instance, you could simply approach Sam and tell them that you're taking them home. The second method is distracting, which is helpful for folks who are less direct. Distracting changes the conversation and energy of the interaction by distracting the individual or individuals. For instance, you could spill a drink or tell Sam that her car is getting towed to get them out of the situation. Finally, you can delegate or find someone who would be more successful in fixing the problem and intervening. For instance, you could tell the host of the party Call the police or alert the bartender that Sam is not safe. For more information, please reach out to the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion's Green Dot staff or attend a Green Dot training available for students. The Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion manages all Title IX incidents and investigations, but you can also talk to counselors or staff in Student Health Services or the Counseling Center if you're looking for a confidential resource. As always, you can report a concern or incident on the Office of Student Conduct website or the homepage of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion website. Now that we have discussed individual aspects of a chapter's culture, let's take a big picture view of chapter culture. The worst case chapter culture results in an organization where all anyone cares about in the chapter is the social aspect of membership. When members of the chapter are in danger, it's the new members, for example, that are expected to step up if all. This type of culture is something we do not want here. Unfortunately, the problematic status quo is a culture where the chapter has a sisterhood or brotherhood opportunities once or twice a semester, and if someone really needs help, the chapter members call the president to intervene. The heart eye emoji chapter that we hope you choose to join exhibits a culture of care. Members step up when something feels wrong and advocate for one another. Not only do they look out for one another, but they also hold each other accountable when someone's engaging in behaviors that do not align with chapter values. 
whether you choose to join a fraternity or sorority here at Westchester or not. We hope that your experiences here are all heart eye emojis, where you feel safe to be yourself, take risks, be creative, express yourself, and grow. If you look around and feel like you aren't having a heart eye emoji experience, you have the power to change culture. We encourage you to speak up and be an active bystander to shape the community in which you now belong. Let's keep this important conversation going. Feel free to stop our, by our office in Sykes or email us at fsl at wcupa.edu. Follow us on social media to learn more about upcoming events and check out our website for up-to-date chapter listings and additional resources. Now that you have finished listening about the Fraternity Sorority Membership experience, if you are interested in joining, you will need to complete a short quiz to reflect on what you've learned. In order to be eligible for membership, you need to complete this quiz. Please visit the website on this screen via QR code or typing in the link directly. The link is also available on the FSL website. Note, you can take the quiz as many times as you need. You must achieve a 100%. Copy of your responses will be sent to you, so please keep this for your records. And any questions, please email fsl at wcupa.edu. Thank you for your attention, and we hope to meet you all soon.